Welcome back for the last time today to Daytona. My name is Adam, joined by your knowledgeable experts on either side of me. And we have one more game for you today, the Masters Finals of the Trading Card Game. All right. What decks is... have we got? You two know these in and out. You've been over them all weekend. <laughs> ben, what we got? Well, uh, over on the right side, we have Ryan, who we've seen multiple times today on stream, playing that uh, Garbodor box deck that runs Necrozma, as well as Drampa seen uh, this is a very very popular deck uh, at this regional uh, just because you have really so many good cards uh, tool drop trubbish along with your trash lance garbador ability lock garbador and any of those big gx pokemon that kind of just sway games in your favor well that's not the only lock deck of locking down those abilities that we've got Nick, what do we got coming from the other side with bob we have the best deck in the format no i'm just kidding this is trevenant break uh, we have that forest curse ability saying that your opponent cannot use any abilities as well as the break saying uh, uh what is it silent fear. silent fear there it is silent fear putting 30 damage counters on each pokemon on your opponent's side of the field this is going to be a a good matchup i agree no, well, Ryan taking his time, heading on into his deck with that Tapu Lele, with the Wonder Tag ability, grabbing his supporter, look to be the Sycamore. But before he discards that hand, something a little more important, get the computer search in play. What do we think he's going to be looking for, gents? Uh, I'm looking probably for another Trubbish to get down, or maybe uh, a Bridget for his first turn. He can hold that Sycamore for next turn. Uh, that's That would be a play that I would be looking for, at least. I think definitely maybe just trying to get another Trubbish so that he gets uh, his board state more established. But however, he does not have to show us that card, so we won't find out until he plays it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he will never know. <laughs> yeah, doesn't have to show your opponent with the computer search. But likely if he's grabbing it now, he did of course take the Sycamore off the Wonder Tag ability. So probably wants to get it down right before Sycamoring, unless it's something he feels is more important in his discard. So yeah, I agree. I believe the choice off the computer search is actually the Floatstone that he's yeah. playing now. Um, from what I could uh, peek out of his hand for, for a second. <laughs> from the order of cards in his hand, it's uh, one of the better guesses, something that is going to be really important in this matchup. And uh, a nice sycamore there from, from Ryan, so keeping that board state moving, maybe able to flesh it out a little bit more before he has to pass the turn over to Bob. Now, something that's really interesting to me, I've looked at Bob's list a couple times. He is not playing any way to discard tools except for zero six. So he's not playing the Field Blower or the Startling Megaphone or anything like that. So that Floatstone could stick there a while. And Ryan plays Garbotoxin Garbodor, which shuts down all abilities. So there could be a chance here where Bob just doesn't get to lock Ryan out of his items. Yeah, I mean, he has to be careful. If he sets up his own Trevenant, can't play his items, can't rely on those Megaphones, those Field Blowers. I believe back in the day it was even Tool Scrapper yeah, when tool I got scrapper. going yeah, in this game. Right. Uh, but not being able to do that means you do need a way around it, but still limited on those supporters. Only the single zero sick, which of course you can multiply as such with, with the VS, VS Seeker. Seeker correct. Um, but then that's, that's a lot of time with his VS Seeker used on just a singular supporter that he's going to be relying on. Which isn't really furthering his hand or his board state, really. If you think about it. No, not at all. I mean, he wants to be using it for, for those better supporters. You know, things like the late Sycamore if you need it. And, and just pilling up Zerosic just to keep the lock away from you seems really inconvenient. Right. Ryan had a really, really strong turn one here. He actually opted to play a second Tapu Lele later on in his turn to make sure that he has a Sycamore for next turn so he doesn't get stuck with a dead hand because it is very likely that we will see a turn one Trevenant coming out of Bob. Yeah, I and mean, he's, in, he's in a pretty solid position to do that. I like when you pick up, of course, a second supporter with the Tapu Lele after you've yeah. played that, because you're basically, in this case, it's Ryan. He's forcing Bob's hand with that piece of knowledge about the Sycamore, maybe try and tempt him into an N. Of course, he's probably going to avoid it, but it's something that he's going to be thinking about in the back of his mind. Right, it's going to be there thinking, man, he has a supporter for next turn, and I know it for a fact. It's not even with, like he has a supporter. It's You know it's a good one right, as well. Right, he's going to be drawing cards, right? And you're actually... Correctly right, Adam. He did grab that end. <laughs> Don't sound so surprised, Ben. Don't yeah. sound so surprised. <laughs> there it is, removing that sycamore that he put in his hand, basically making sure that he can at least try and disadvantage Ryan off this end, even if it's not the premium supporter for Bob in this turn. He just needs to get something going. And hey, he didn't really play much out of his hand, so he probably wasn't too comfortable in what he had to begin with. Yeah, he probably didn't have any playable cards other than that Tapu Lele. Yeah, get the Tapu Lele down, of course. Uh, the Bursting Balloon, I believe, is that on there? Yeah, that's the Bursting Balloon. Yep, that's going to be the one that, you know, we'll, we'll keep him, you know, get it down early, that'd be nice. Yeah. But, again, if, if that's all you're playing out of a, a hand to, to kick off your game, it's 
probably been a little lightweight of a start for you and hoping he can get more off this end. We're hoping to see maybe an energy or that Dimension Valley Stadium so we can see an ascension here into that Trevenant. Uh, ascension is such a good attack, you just get to search your deck for a Trevenant and put it in play. Yep, I mean, that's Seems what he's, <laughs> he's going to do as soon as it's in play as well. That's when that, he's going to go get that item lock in play. comes that Trevenant, so Ryan won't have access to any of his item cards going into this turn, and he does not have that Sycamore that he searched off that second Tapu Lele. But yeah, he does it, have a Bridget. Interesting. Yeah, the full art Bridget there on the front of Ryan's hand. One of the options he could use to flood that bench with Trubbishes, not only would he fill the bench with Trubbishes, those three cards removed would of course help him out when he does go in for a simple draw supporter later in the game. That would mean he's going to be able to get those up, but right now, you know, it's looking a little bit dicey. He's got one Trubbish out of his hand, so the Bridget's value has just been immediately kind of tanked a little Literally, bit Literally, like, cut in half at yeah. that point. Yeah, I mean, it, even he knows, of course, how many Trubbishes there are. If he's only got one more in there, you're not going to bridge it for just the one. Right. But, as we saw in the similar Garbodor box list earlier in the tournament, there's other things you could be looking for. The Drampers, the Muse, all those good things. You know, get them out nice and early and just get this bench set up. Absolutely. It's, this deck is really crazy. I, uh, I applaud whoever made it. It's <laughs> crazy. Like, they all worked on it. They've all, like, put their own spin to it. But this deck just comes with the punches, just rolls with it. It's crazy. Well, Ryan actually playing another Tapu Lele. We did see the Bridget in hand. Ben, what's your take on it? What's he going to go for? If he's not going to use Bridget, what does he need here? Is he going to get that Sycamore back? No, I'm actually thinking exactly what he grabbed right there. He might grab a Lysander. He definitely doesn't want to swing into this Trevenant with a Bursting Bloom and take a free 60 damage, uh, just becoming <laughs> that much closer to being knocked out early by a Silent Fear. Um, I'm thinking he might want to just potentially bring up that Phantom. Yep, if he has another energy in hand, he will be able to attach and take that knockout. Well, uh, Preventing Bob one more Trevenant from coming down on the bench. Yeah, if this Trevenant or this Phantom actually gets knocked out, that's a bit of a slowdown there for Bob. You know, he's not able to start working on both at once. He's just going to lose that on the second turn of the game, or Ryan's second turn more accurately. So this Trevenant coming back into the active, but it's part of Phantom already removed from play. Yep. We're going to see... That kind of slows down Bob. He wanted to get another Trevenant in play and maybe a break in play. So this is going to uh, to hinder his kind of ability to set up his board more. Uh, what a, a great play from Ryan there. Yep, very, very smart. But putting a lot of faith and a lot of power onto the singular Tapu Lele. You know, that's a lot of investment in a card that's not the primary attacker in a deck like this. Well, he knows that uh, Bob's deck can almost never one-shot a Tapu Lele. Actually, I don't think he can ever one-shot a Tapu Lele. So... He, uh, Ryan knows that that Tapu Lele is pretty comfortable. Comfortable for now. Yeah. I mean, he's not been caught by the Silent Fear yet, so it's still in a really good position. And we see as well the way that Ryan went in and marked up that discard pile mm -hmm. with the items pulled out, probably looking to get that Trash Alliance in play as soon as possible. Maybe one in his hand, getting a little bit presumptuous there that he's going to be able to swing it into the active. As we do see Trevenant Break actually put into play from Bob, so that's going to help him out. Something he needed for the setup before he goes for the Juniper. Dimension, Dimension Valley, Valley yeah. almost a perfect hand there. Juniper for a fresh seven, not having to discard anything else. Um, that coming as his point of not being able to one shot. Bob's really only way to maybe take out a Lele in one hit would be to use his own top of Leles, but it's kind of counterintuitive to his strategy. He wants to keep setting those Trevenants up and attaching energy to them so that when one is gone, there's a fresh one coming right up, ready to silent fear or tree slam, whatever he needs to do. Yeah, basically able to just keep those moving, and it's going. The juniper is going to help him there. You know, getting another phantom down on the bench, uh, putting a stadium in the wrong place. Actually, we did mark it on the table for them, but chose to ignore that. Uh, <laughs> but you know, being able to keep those cards moving, keep the board set up, and maybe try and catch up with just how big Ryan's bench is. I mean, yes, there's a very effective silent fear with all of that damage spread about, but it's still a very lightweight bench for Bob. Yes, uh, that's what I want to see in the next coming turns. I want to make sure that. Uh that Bob's going to get some more of those Phantoms down, maybe another Trevenant or so. He's definitely going to need to get at least something else in play, because if this Trevenant does get knocked out, it does get a little bit difficult. Of course, the Trevenant break, a little bit harder to take out, but still, you know, if Ryan just knows that there's no hope for Bob to get another one in play, he can just keep throwing energy on that singular Tapu Lele and going all in on it. Correct. 
Absolutely. I think that's why Ryan's choosing to attach so much energy to this top layer in the front because he knows it's going to be a good attacker. He can continue to keep attaching energy to it. And then, worst comes worst, if it does get close to getting knocked out, he can always use that ace to roll a supporter. Which he just, that right we just saw there. Hand, and he can play that top of Lele right back down, maybe grab a supporter if he needs it for the turn, and start attaching to other Lele's he has on his bench. Yeah, I mean, he's got three Tapu Lele on the bench, so maybe looking to rotate that in as an attacker in this Garbodor toolbox deck, as you guys kind of referred to it. So, definitely an option here. If he can just keep picking it up with Ace Roller, put himself in a good position. 160, of course, the hit points on the Trevenant Break. Not too unreasonable to try and hit with this Tapu Lele. I think uh, two-shotting a Trevenant seems kind of bad usually, but Ryan is in such a, a lead right now that he's okay with that. Yeah, I mean, when it's the only Trevenant in play as well, racking up that damage is going to be so, so important. And the Silent Fear, again, these are really big numbers that a Silent Fear has to hit. It's going to take five, six Silent right. Fear, maybe work in something like a Tree Slam, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just really difficult to reliably do that. And even without the items available to him, I still feel like, do you guys agree that Ryan would be in the driving seat in this game? Right now, yes, I would oh. have to agree. Most definitely. I feel like how th that's how most Trevenant games go up, is you just feel feel bad for their opponent because they could be doing so much with what they have, but they're limited with so little cards in their deck not being able to play item cards. Right. Yep, well, the Versus Seeker coming out there from Bob, pulling up the Team Flare Grunt, discarding, of course, that double colorless energy from the Tapu Lele. And we are going to see that lovely turn of all the dice over to six as Silent <laughs> Fear dealing 30 to everything on Ryan's side. Do we think that getting the Team Flare Grunt probably the right decision to slow down this onslaught of Tapu Lele? Yes, most definitely. Trevenant wants to start denying as many energy as they can as early as possible. That's really how they kind of take over games in the late game. Uh, their opponents really just can't do anything if they don't have any energies in their deck. So they Which want to is utilize kind of, those crushing hammers and enhanced hammers. That's the, the thing that I was going to point out. There are no hammers in this list. Usually in Trev list there are probably three crushing hammer and an enhanced hammer. There aren't any hammers in this list. Yep, Bob sacrificing those hammers for slightly thicker lines of some of the supporters, you know, considering that we do of course have the VS Seeker available in Expanded. A lot of one-offs, but even something like Juniper at four offs seems very yeah. excessive with VS Seeker and all of these other one-offs that you'd probably like to get in play. Right, like Instead of playing just the one Wally, he opted to play the two Wally. Make sure that he gets that Trevin at turn one no matter what. He wants to make sure that that sticks. Yeah, definitely something he wants to get out as early as possible. And, you know, with that in mind as well, Juniper just seems like a very heavy line. We are going to see Ryan attaching that double colorless energy and going for the VS Seeker right out of his discard pile. Yeah, that Garbotoxin is now in play. So Forest's Curse is no longer in play. So Ryan is now able to use his items as freely as he'd like. Yeah, that's going to help him out. You know, really nice mechanic there that Garbotoxin just shuts it off. And one of the key reasons to be running Trevenant completely removed from play is Trevenant not only got hit by not being able to use his ability, just knocked out for another prize to Ryan. Yes. Yeah, I Bob's think, uh, really going to need to dig for that uh, copy of Zerosic here if he wants to keep this item lock going because like we talked about Bob's list earlier, he doesn't run any tool scrappers, field blowers, or anything like that to remove tools as far as his items go. He leaves it all up to that Sorosic. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult for him. We do see another Trevenant break coming into play, so that's certainly going to help out a little bit there. But, you know, looking for the correct things. See Ryan just keeping count of all the items in that discard pile, taking it up to seven now. So that's going to be a really nasty trash -a lunch. So one more item in there, and trash -a lunch will comfortably take out a Trevenant break. Yeah, Yo, absolutely, yes. Which... You need to know from Bob, he needs to slow down maybe, but his board is so weak right now that he can't. He has to keep going. He has to keep playing these items, trying to get more Phantoms down, trying to get more Trevenants out. Yeah. One thing I definitely have been wondering during this game, and unfortunately we don't have access to those nice prize cams you see sometimes on the other streams, um, I'm wondering if maybe Bob is having a problem with not having any Phantoms in his deck. Um, he just hasn't drawn them, we haven't seen him search for them, and we've only seen two, right. if I'm correct. So he might actually just be struggling with only two in his deck, but like I said, we don't have those I believe this is the third. If we, if we, you know, he took the, the first one as a, a, when it was a lone Phantom, he oh, took it out. Yep. Uh, then the next one came up, uh, made it to Trevenant Break, but didn't stick around as Trevenant Break for very long. And this is the third one, but you know, if that last one's prized, for that example, might be a problem, right? then he needs a way to get it out, and, and looking at how this has gone, his ways to get it out, pretty limited right Just now. Just the one super rod, yeah. Yep, I mean, and again, as soon as that super rod's played, even if he makes another Trevenant break into play, 
the super odds going to be enough for those knockouts. Yeah. Yeah, there really is a bit of a timer as, as the players just shake hands. And yeah. I think Bob knows, looking through his deck, he's just going to keep on losing stuff every single time to this setup from, um, you know, Ryan. Really, really smart play. Really good turn one that I don't think Bob was able to catch up with. I agree. I want to see uh, I want to see if Bob can maybe get more phantoms down this game. That's really the key to success here. Because we saw in Swiss they played, and Bob took game one easy. Ryan came back and grinded out game two, and they ended up tying because they ran out of time. But, uh, yeah, you don't know what that is in BGC, right? We, we once had a game go to time. I don't think that's true at all. It was. It was World's Top 4. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, it, was, okay. it was pretty well, intense. My fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> you but... got, you've got some nuts tiebreakers, <laughs> oh, my though. my bad. I'm yeah, sorry. We, most of our scores are just, like, one, like, wins, loss. Yeah. And then there's this, like, weird third number on yours. Like, what is What this? does that even mean? You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the big thing as well, if we looked at uh, Bob's turn one, he, he really got nothing out of his turn one, especially in comparison to Ryan's. It's like... Bob doesn't have a Bridget in there. Mm -hmm. That'd be real nice to just oh, lay yeah. your Phantoms We down. actually mentioned we that said earlier that, in yeah, Bob's we early said match that against Ryan. Against we Ryan Sable. Why not yeah. just try one Bridget and get all those Phantoms out turn one? You, you have that Ascension attack, so if you have Dimension Valley or the Psychic Energy, you're going to be evolving into your Trevenants anyway. Right. Yeah. His lines do look a little weird. I mean, mm -hmm. for Juniper, um, you can obviously debate if you want to run Juniper or Sycamore, but which one looks better. Right. Um, <laughs> Juniper. It's, it's full, Juniper. Full Art Juniper is Juniper. is the play yeah. every time. But only available in your expanded events. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. But, you know, you've got four of them with four VS Seekers. Maybe we could cut one and sneak in a Bridget there. Maybe that would you could be nice. lay that out. You know, I'm not calling out a finalist, but I'm just saying it's right. something to explore. It might be a thing that could be possible, right? Yeah, and the three Wally. That seems like a lot of Wally when yeah, you can Wally's usually just lot. Ascension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wally's a lot, yeah. It's going to be interesting here. Looks like we're already shuffled and cut up. We're drawing into our hands. This game will definitely be interesting because Bob will be going first, and that is ideally what Trevenant players want to do every yes, single time. Every they single want time you to ever. never have any items for the entire game, or at least a large portion of it, especially from the beginning. So Ryan being able to have that first turn in game one, playing so many items, that computer search ultra ball, being able to get three Tapu Leles out right. on that first turn, just was able to accelerate him so, so fast. And like we talked about, Bob just not having any of those phantoms set up. He was just a lot slower and he couldn't right. keep up. And yeah. also, I believe that Floatstone came down on the Trubbish turn one as well. So mm -hmm. that could have been a huge turn for Bob if he actually would have went first. Yeah, a lot different. I mean, the shame in start from Bob, though. Not so peachy. You want to be putting that on the bench, not yeah. opening with it in your hand. <laughs> Admittedly, it has a way out uh, with its attack. But still not what you were looking for, even against the uh, the Trubbish there. And discarding a Treb and a Treb break out of his hand uh, Just, off of that Ultra mm. Ball, definitely Oof. not an ideal discard that Bob wants to be making, but he does have that Super Rod, so they're not gone forever. Um, he's probably stuck with a handful of a lot of good cards. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. If that's what you're giving up, you know, you've got to have even better stuff mm -hmm. in there. Right. If that's what you're considering the bottom of the barrel, then, but yeah. the rest of your hand has to be like insane. Premium <laughs> hand, yeah. Yeah, top absolutely. tier hand. Um, still, you know, something nice that he'll be able to get something reliably out with the Ultra Ball. But you do have to wonder after the trouble he had, even with these pretty generous lines of Phantom Trevenant and Trevenant Break, he had those problems getting them set up in game one. So he's got to avoid that. He's not made his life any easier by discarding them. Right. And we're uh, we're going through this the first initial deck search. Bob wants to make sure that everything that he needs is in there. Um, maybe we're going to see a Wally this turn. I would hope that would be the play. Yep, he's hesitating again with another Ultra Ball oh, coming out. he just out. discarded his Super Rod, and I don't believe he has a way of getting any items back in this I deck. I really don't know how this play is going to work out for Bob. Aggressively going through the deck by aggressively discarding as well. I mean, I understand that he's a little bit scared, of course, of racking up those items, but he's still already put four items in. So if Ryan can quickly get Trash Lance into play, he's swinging for 80 and the guaranteed two hits. Already, yeah, that's... This has been such a aggressive tear through the deck turn from Bob. Yes. Definitely, but I think what Bob is doing is he's already realized that he does have so many item cards and he really just wants to make sure he can get that turn one item lock because even if uh, he's discarding all of these resources, if he gets that item lock, it's still going to be very hard for Ryan to search out those trash lines, card doors, or even make sure he gets a support of her turn. Yeah, if he can stop it, that, that's what he's got to do. But going all in, another double discard, this Jeez. time in the form of Computer Search. That's his Zerosic thrown away there in that discard pile. Mm -hmm. He's going to need a VS Seeker to get it out later if he does run into this setup with Garbotoxin. Correct. 
I, it's going to be interesting to see what Bob gets here. I'm thinking maybe a Wally. I think I saw an energy in his hand so he can retreat the Shaman. Yeah, there's the Wally. Yep. Make sure that he gets that turn one Trevenant. That's what he needs. He needs Ryan to struggle to get those items into play. So got to be moving around. Really got to be keeping Ryan under the cosh as this game starts. Leaving that lone Trebuchet in there. If all he can do for draw is hit Ultra Balls, that option taken away from him is going to put Ryan in a really precarious position. Correct. Most definitely. Ultra Ball nowadays almost just seems like a draw supporter when it's in your hand with access to cards like Tapu Lele and Jirachi and EX, especially right. in the expanded format. Yeah, you can turn it into pretty much whatever you want. And Ryan, I see one of the Ultra Balls there in the front of his hand, I believe, looking at it kind of longingly, hoping he could play it, but not with this Trevenant in play. He's like, if only, if only. <laughs> yeah. But it was, a, it was a big turn from Bob. You know, he put a lot of things in the discard. He put a lot of things, you know, to get through to that. But he knew how important the item lock was. And as you gents were saying, it's really, really tough to, uh, to fight that if it goes up on turn one. Correct. I think we are going to see a Tapu Lele, maybe, from Ryan. I mean, he's looking through the discard, so definitely sussing out his options here as, as he's maybe using that for his decision-making, looking to see what he can do with it. Um, I do believe that is his Necrozma GX that he's benched. Those hyper rares, always so hard to tell which ones they are from the camera. Yeah. It's not Drampa. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, probably, it's either Drampa or, or uh, Necrozma, or both. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the guaranteed Tapu Lele down, we see him. And there he goes, pulling that Bridges. So if yes. he can't search with the balls, he's got to search with the lady. That's a little bit different, and I regret saying that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. And we see a Sycamore here instead of the... Hmm. Instead of the Bridget. I, think, I wonder if that's... I definitely think Ryan just opting to maybe get that Lele down on the bench. He was such a useful attacker in that last game. Uh, and maybe just wanting to get rid of that Bridget, as helpful as it may have seemed as we saw him grab it. Uh, maybe have Ryan has a different line of play that we don't quite see yet. Yeah, I mean, giving up the opportunity to get rid of those trebuchets is something that, you know, is very curious. But there's a, the thing is with the Bridget in this deck that he's got, there's so many tech choices that he could be pulling out with the Bridget. Not only the trebuchets, he could be pulling out the Mew, the Drampa, even though it's a GX, or a Corios, Mimikyu's. There's so many things it can do, but in this game he clearly doesn't want them. Right. And uh, I actually was talking with Ryan between rounds. I asked him uh, if you guys, if you play Bob again, what's your like your line of play? And he said Mimikyu actually helps him in this matchup um, against the Silent Fear, um, being able to spread thirty onto Bob's board softens up those uh, those Trevenants. So it's a it's a little like a weird for Bob to be like, oh, I just got hit with my own attack. So it, it's kind of weird. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's a really nice play, and I think that's something that you could have got off the Bridget if you were Ryan, unless he's been in, had a peep through, seen the lack of it. Right. You know, I think I saw it in this time, but it was a you know, real flash there. And being able to Silent Fear, I think, would be really good, especially with those kind of low health Shamans on the bench. Right. I mean, yes, it takes a few turns, but then they're easier to pick up with something like a Guzma or a Lysander and just knock them out. I think that's kind of the play here with Ryan. I think I saw the Mimikyu in Ryan's hand. Ryan plays this Necrozma, and since Bob has benched both of these Shaman, uh, one Silent Fear from Copycat with M Mimikyu, and, and, four prizes. and Black Ray <laughs> yeah. GX is four prizes. So I would hate... I would hate for this to be the reality, but uh, what I can tell right now from this search of for Bob is he's playing this Wally. I think searching for a Trevenant Break doesn't have one in his deck. If only he hadn't discarded it in turn one. You know, that could be his only Trevenant Break in there. Basically putting himself in the position now where, yeah, you got Forest Curse down. But if you've gone in and not found a Pokemon that evolves... Then you kind of figured out there's no breaks left in his deck. It, it, this turn one's really come back to bite, Bob. He aggressively went through that Discarding deck. Discarding those breaks, that not one only, break. He, not only did he discard the Trevenant break, he also discarded the Super his Rod. Super Rod, which that is he the needs way to, to get, get it, it back. back. Yeah, the, the, I mean, looking down his list, there's no way to grab anything out of his discard. And uh, 
It's going to struggle to take a prize yeah. if he doesn't have the Trevenant Break. Oh, man. Uh, this is definitely going to be an uphill battle for Bob, to say the least, with no Trevenant Breaks left. In I would enjoy deck. you know, seeing the reaction as you go through for the Wally and fail it. In a deck like this, your opponent right. must be kind of rubbing his hands. I'm sure Ryan's looking yeah, that's... pretty pleased with himself. The Trevenant Break doesn't even matter anymore as Trevenant removed by this Trash Lanch Garbador. Oh, and the AZ to, to pick up that Shaman so he can set it back down to draw six cards. I like the play. It looks like a bit of a play of desperation here. These shamans are going to start falling really, really quick. I mean, yes, even if he takes the knockout on both of the shamans, still going to need one more prize, but Bob needs something on the bench to stop yeah. losing through that condition. And I mean, everyone here just shaking their head. Uh, uh, Bob's state of the game, aggressively going through his deck turn one, aggressively going through his deck now, and, and still just not having any Pokemon, really. Right. This I'm sure. is a rough spot for Bob, for sure. I'm trying to go through every single outlet that he might be able to get this game through my head, and I don't see it, but Bob Zhang, very experienced player. We never uh, want to count anyone out until the game is finished. So there might be a line of play that we just don't see. Yet. No. And that, maybe that, he does, yeah. Yeah, maybe he's going to be able to pull something out here. As, uh, you know, he's going to silent lab. I like that. It, he's got to do something, I think, in this instance. But, you know, the biggest thing, his main attacker in this deck isn't available to him. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cards uh, that are item cards in the discard. We see the little counter there in the bottom. Uh, pretty much anything now that Bob promotes is going to get knocked out by Trash Lance immediately. Yeah. Which is unfortunate for Bob. I, I was thinking, you know, because he did his first initial search. Did he not count his breaks? Because he... Discarded the super on right after that. He he ultra balled twice, and that was as you mentioned very correctly. You know he had the super rod in hand, may have been able to super rod it back in, right? But didn't actually go for it. Kind of kept it close to the chest on the first ultra ball and uh, let it go. So uh, you know you two very very experienced in this. If you're Bob, what do you do now? Do you, which do you go on the offensive with? Because you are losing resources rapidly. Uh, seeing how I believe his Lele was on no he. Uh, I don't know. He doesn't play DCEs. Bob does not play DCEs, so I don't think has no Lele way to, is to an go. Attack. Yeah, like a turn one attack. I don't think there is a way. I mean, um, knowing of course that Ryan was playing Garbodor, knowing that the Garbotoxin was good, would you agree that aggressively going for it? And I, I say that you know he really double he discarding four cards yeah. just to hit two Ultra Balls is a lot of cards. You know, would you agree that playing cards that liberally against the Garbodor is the way to maneuver around it? I think just from game one, losing the, the momentum race against Ryan, he really wanted to ensure that he got that turn one item lock and maybe got a little lost in his play and was getting too excited that he was going to reach that item lock and ended up unfortunately uh, discarding too many valuable resources that he needed. Yeah, I mean, a little bit tunnel vision there. Bob ending up blowing the beans on everything, trying to get that item lock in play. Successfully got it. But it didn't actually last all that long as he's now desperately trying to find a way back into this game. Have you ever seen a shaman come back? Anyone? Anyone with a big shaman come back? Um, there's, it's happened. Against Trev. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Not ah, in Trev. How about <laughs> against Garbodor? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> with no double colorless. <laughs> with no, yeah, with zero double colorless, I don't think so. <laughs> it slow and steady wins the race. I mean, Ryan's still got to take four prizes. We're yeah. looking on the uh, looking on the positive here for right, Bob. Right, right, absolutely. You've got to see it. He's got the bursting balloon. That'll put some damage down. Yeah, yeah. That almost kills. That halfway kills a Garbodor. <laughs> like, 60 All right. damage, yeah. Halfway we're kills there. the we're Garbodor. Uh, he doesn't have anything else ready to go on the bench yet, so, uh, you know. Oh, uh, I lied, I'm There's sorry. There's the second tra trash land, just <laughs> like that. I don't know why I said that. Of course, he had it ready to go. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's board stayed just immensely past whatever Bob could have had at this point. Uh, unfortunately, that double trash lance is just going to be so hard for Bob to get over at this point. Yeah, I mean, Without he... any trevenant breaks, I would agree. Mm. Yeah, I mean, with no, not even a Trevenant, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, there's not even a, a Phantom on the bench. <laughs> no Phantom, no Trevenant, no Trevenant break. Bob Zhang here in the finals against Ryan Sablehouse, really struggling in this matchup. His Trevenant break didn't quite go off properly in Game 1. Uh, those of you just joining us, it's uh, pretty much wrapping up here with this uh, manual attachment of the Psychic Energy to the Shaman. I would like to see if, um, if Bob doesn't get another... Uh, 
basic down, attaching another psychic energy, and Sky returning himself. So just going out on his yeah, own terms. Just to, yeah, so he goes out on his own terms instead of on Ryan's terms. Well, that's not going to happen this turn. The Phantom hitting the bench, of course, for Bob. So maybe able to try and buy another turn, but it's still looking a little bleak on exactly what's in there. Ryan going through, of course, after changing up the stadium again. Just making another count. Uh, it's looking even worse with even more items in there. So Trash Lanch is going to become a big old problem as we see uh, the alleged Necrozma GX put up into the active. Lysander's a good card. <laughs> yeah, I was going through my head trying to figure out any way that Bob could potentially get himself out of this situation, and I was thinking if he can bring something up from the bench and item lock Ryan in the same turn, there's a chance that something might get stuck up there long enough to where Bob can kind of get some momentum going. That um, the Krasma GX, of course, weak to Psychic. So if Bob can get a tree slam off anytime soon, he will be hitting for a lot of damage. 120 of them. 120 in that two-shot range. But I mean, it's going to help, but it's uh, it's going to take a lot of turns to get there. And most importantly, turn. Bob needs to start getting into his prizes to uh, to dig out those Trevenant breaks. So even if he gets it up to a Trevenant state, you know, and can keep it there, which he apparently can't. Can, cannot, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he, he can't keep it there against this Trash Lanish Garbodor. And, and there it is. It's it. all yeah. done. And just like that, Ryan Sablehouse is your winner. Yep, your Daytona, Florida regional champion. So Ryan, you know, really showing how to execute this deck, making sure your board is full with all the goodies on turn one. Pulled it off in both games.